Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and this is going to be a very different episode than pr almost anything I've ever done on this show before. One, it's audio, which, you know, audio only, I did recently with Ben Pronsky, and sometimes I've done it with news stories, but this time I have a guest with me, uh, Eddie Mullet, say hello, sir. Hey guys. <laughs> and Eddie's been a longtime uh, commenter on my uh, on my videos, and then we started, you know, getting in touch offline, and then you know, exchanged numbers and became friends. And um, and first of all, I want to say uh, thank you for your service because I know you're in the military, sir. Oh, thank you, man, and, and I appreciate you having me on. I I think it's uh, neat that you're reaching out to the community. Absolutely, and we're going to have more people on on a separate show that I do called Parasite Podcast. But uh, but for this one, I thought this would make a good Venom vlog episode because I'm not really interviewing you and, and talking to you about you know personal things like I do on Parasite Podcast. Although I'd like to have you on there at some point if I if I am able to get you. But um, for this episode, we've noticed and and kind of the thing that brought us together was originally you know and I know a lot of you guys out there you're big Donny Cates fans and I understand he's going through a tough time right now so. There was um, a little, you know, hesitation on my part to, you know, whether I was going to record this now or record it later. I figured, you know what, you know, I talked it out with Eddie. We're like, we'll record it now and maybe I'll post it in a couple days uh, because I, I saw just last night that he was, you know, left Twitter temporarily. But just know that this video is not some kind of attack. We're not trying to, like, you know, come at anybody or anything like that. This is just us noticing some coincidences in his run that we've seen in other, you know, comics before. And, uh, and also we're going to talk a little bit about how that got both of our attentions, how that got us talking to each other. And then we're also going to give you positive things too that we think about during this run and some of the things we think he does well. So it's not just like a, you know, a negative thing. But I did for a while, I've been taking notes on stuff that Donnie's been doing that I felt like, you know, I'm like, oh, I've seen that before in this or with that. And the only problem is I sometimes will see Donnie promote it as like a hype train, as like a new idea. And me and Eddie Mullet both, you know, came across that and felt the same way. And so we said, well, it's, you know, it's not really a new idea. And whenever we noticed whenever fans would say respectfully to Donnie, hey, actually, this happened in this book. Did just did this inspire you? Donnie would snap back and say, no, it didn't, you know, whatever. And it's like, that's OK. Like we we understand that great minds think alike, that ideas, you know, are cyclical and they go around. So this isn't about us doing that. This is just us having fun, pointing out things that we like or dislike in the current Venom run that we've also seen before and we just found interesting that it was similar. Um, yeah, so anything you want to add to that, Eddie? Yeah, and my main, the whole thing I noticed about this, my main thing is to highlight the books that these ideas that we've noticed have come from because there's a lot of great stuff that, you know, Donnie himself has promoted the 90s comics that a lot, most of the bulk of this material is coming from and uh, it just get eyes on it and just give the guys and the original creators uh, some props too and uh, and I'm, I'm happy that he's digging into these books and I, that's one of the things I like is that he's bringing back stuff from my childhood that uh, got me into the comics. There you go, exactly. And so, again, this is another way for us to showcase these other great books that are from the 90s and the past that you guys maybe not have heard of or didn't realize had symbiote connections. So this is a nice way for us to talk about all that stuff in one place. So uh, I'm ready to go. Are you ready, Eddie? Yeah, let's do it. All right, man. So first up, the one thing that really put Donnie on the map for both of us of something we've seen before, I, I kind of started seeing things a little bit before this, but we'll talk about those later because this was the big one, and I think you and I both agree. It's Venom having wings. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that uh, and it's it's an image uh, that come out uh, on that on that cover, <laughs> lots of covers now, yeah. but uh, it they're like wow, brand new powers and Venom and. It just, it's one of those things as, a, as an old symbiote fan that's like, I, I've seen it, I'm like, that looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as that book came out, I, or like that cover came out, I think Donnie posted, what, Venom with wings? What, are we crazy? And then all these people, you know, chimed in and saying like, oh my god, that's great, That's an, I've never seen that before with Venom. And of course, people like me and you, even Bizarnage over at the Venom site, um, he tweeted to Donnie, replied to him, he said, actually that happened in Nova number seven. And uh, and that's not the book I remembered it from. I remembered it from Rune versus Venom, which s someone else right after Bizarnage posted the cover from Rune versus Venom. And uh, so immediately there was a little bit of a, a like, hey, this actually has happened before. And that's cool that you're pulling from that continuity. You know, and so we didn't really see that acknowledgement from Donnie's part, but at the same time, like I said, ideas are cyclical. You know, he could have just had, you know, missed those books somehow. You even said yourself that Rune vs. Venom is a book you physically have never held in your hands. Yeah, I mean, if not going through this in 
uh, if nothing else is done, is <laughs> I've learned a lot more knowledge. Like, yeah, a lot of those crossover books that uh, uh, Venom has appeared in, it's they're like niche books. That they're they're tough to find, and they they make you pay for them if you're looking for them online. Yeah, they do. There was a mini series I think called Wild Thing or something, and it was like this yeah. this girl that looks like Eon Flux, and uh, she yeah, they like Venom and Carnage are in the first two issues, but they're technically digital versions of them. Um, it's really weird, and but yeah, to track something like that down or track down Rune versus Venom, it does take a lot of work. So, so yeah, what was your feeling when that first happened? Like, cause I wasn't like mad about it. I was just kind of like, oh okay, Donnie's clearly bringing in new fans, which is good. That's what we want for Venom. And I saw it as an opportunity to maybe educate people on like, hey, this actually has happened before. And it looks like you and Bizarnage also felt that way. But I'm just kind of curious what your initial reaction was. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think there was, I don't know, and really, I don't think there was much malicious. I, at the time, I was just like, oh, I was like, yeah, well, you know, I mean, it was kind of in a one, and I had to go back myself and dig and try to figure out where the heck it happened, and be like, oh, okay, I remember it now. But, I mean, yeah, it, it, it this one in particular could have been su- easily, easily missed uh, for just the, I would say, like, the average reader. I mean, because, I mean, heck, I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, and and that's the thing is some people remembered, some didn't. So that was the first thing for me that I noticed where I was like, like on a major scale because I've noticed something else before. And like I said, we'll get there when we talk about damnation. But uh, but for this, I was like, okay, the wings not exactly new. Not it shouldn't be uh, promoted as a new power from Null. Um, but you know whatever, it's fine. The the thing that made me laugh was that people would come in and when I said, oh, this actually isn't a new power. Venom's had wings before. Someone actually responded, yeah, but those old wings only let him glide. These new wings can flap and make him fly. And I just remember laughing at that hysterically. I'm like, wow, how far do you have to go? Like, I'm not accusing the guy of anything. <laughs> like, I'm just pointing out a similarity. And these people who get defensive, I'm like, dude, what horse in this race do you have? Like, it was just a little, I found that a little weird. So I thought that's where some of the, 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 uh, you know, uh, not toxicity because that's too extreme of a word, but just where that defensiveness started to pop up uh, surrounding Donnie's posts. Yeah, and, and and really, I don't think he does much flying in them anyhow. I mean, he, he doesn't like just jump up and take off. I don't believe he might even just glided with them in the <laughs> yeah. in, in in Donnie's run too. Because I mean, he, it's not like they haven't come back since. I don't believe either since that uh, that that first. Uh, arc. They they came back in Absolute Carnage for a scene. He uh, he flew at the end of Absolute Carnage number four, I think. Yeah, when he was like super powered with all the other. So, yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Then he did actually fly it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He did fly, but uh, but it's you know, but in that scene where he rescued um, Miles Morales, you're right. He just glided to the ground uh, with that. Right. Um, but that wasn't the so that was the one thing. But what was the thing that really made you take notice of Donnie's stuff and his reaction? That more more importantly, because that's the thing is we want to talk about here, and this is a good place to do it. We'll do it after we mention this second part, but of like his reactions to people when they do mention hey i've seen that before sometimes it gets really negative on his part you know there's, there's some criticism there for him so i'm curious you know what's the second thing on our list that kind of stood out to you yeah the the, the one that really it, it really took me back and kind of made me like question i was like wow <laughs> it, it's his reaction to the the guy on twitter that I, I i don't remember his name but he brought up the cosmic ghost rider uh be initially released in the 90s run um in gardens of galaxy 13 and 14 and it, it, it was it was uh it was surprising i wouldn't i, I wouldn't have expected uh anyone to <laughs> lash out like he did yeah i mean it, it's fair I, I try to take both sides of this i can understand the fan being like hey i saw this and uh you know i thought it was interesting what we're talking about is so cosmic ghost Rider is a character that donnie uh, created in uh, a story called Thanos Wins, which I really liked. I thought it was a great story. And the reason I liked it a lot um, is because it's a one-and-done story. It, 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 it takes place in an alternate future where the ending doesn't really have any consequences on the main Marvel Universe. And I like a lot of stories like that, and I think writers are really good when they get to explore stories like that. So I thought Donnie did a great job, even though there was a lot of power fantasy in it, which, you know, we can talk about that too here, um, which is the stacking of powers. It's like, oh, here's Punisher, who's already awesome. Let's make him a Ghost Rider. 
okay, now let's make him a Herald of Galactus. And then now let's make him, you know, a child of Thanos kind of like, it's, it's like how many things, how much power, you know, do you need to give these characters? Uh, they even have Silver Surfer show up with uh, Thor's hammer in this book. And it's like, oh, those are all fun for power fantasy stuff. But to me, it comes across as really uh, intense fan fiction. Whether you love it or not, that's your your opinion. But Cosmic Ghost Rider is this thing that now exists in the regular Marvel Universe. And there were these books in the 90s, like you said, Guardians of the Galaxy number 13 and 14, where they go to the year 3000 and they see a, a Ghost Rider driving around space on his space motorcycle. And so, yeah, what what you know, what was kind of the reaction the fan posted? And then Donnie just kind of, you know, really, really came at him, it seemed. Yeah, it didn't really seem like, I mean, I, I get, you know, he, I don't, I don't have any doubt that he doesn't work hard, you know, so, and this is, uh, Frank Castle is, you know, is, as the ghostwriter is his creation, I, I don't take that away from him, and, and I don't even think it's a bad idea, to be honest, but yeah, the way that he, uh, I, I didn't think the guy was attacking him, that's the thing that really uh, stood out to me, it was just, just the, the reaction to, I, I don't know, maybe he's having a bad day. It, it, you don't know. You know, there's stuff going on in people's lives. So, but it, just as a public figure, you, <laughs> you got to walk that line. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, I think actually what the guy said was, hey, um, was there any inspiration from this book? And he posted the cover of Guardians 13. And I think Donnie just, re- just uh, you know, real bluntly said, no, there wasn't. And then, and then someone else said, "Well, maybe it was like because you know Donnie o- openly admits, and that's where sometimes, you know, the the mud, the waters are a little muddied on whether I believe him sometimes or not. Which is, you know, he used to work in a comic book store, and I've worked in multiple comic stores. Every store I've owned, people bring in ninety stuff to trade. You give them next to nothing for it because they're not worth anything. You put them in your quarter bin or your dollar bin. So I have no doubt on some level, maybe it's possible that he could have seen this cover. He could have seen some of the other stuff we're talking about, the Rune versus Venom. He could have seen that stuff and maybe just didn't pay any attention to it. Or he legitimately didn't see any of it. And that's fine, too. Uh, again, we're not here to accuse. We're just pointing out some similarities. And like this guy did, he said, hey, Guardians of the Galaxy 13, that had a cosmic looking Ghost Rider. And it's not your version. It's not a Frank Castle. It doesn't have the backstory that yours has, but it is a, a Ghost Rider in space floating around on a space motorcycle. And at the core, you know, and that's the thing is like people sometimes come at me and go, Donnie couldn't have taken that idea or the, the idea is completely different. It's like, yes, the execution of the idea is completely different, but the base ideas are very similar. It's a guy in space and he's a ghost rider. Like it's the, it's the exact same base and foundation. So the guy did mention that and then Donnie came at him and then I saw other people um, like Richard Pace and a couple other people chiming in going, what's going on here? And Donnie saying, oh, just some fan trying to tell me where I get my ideas from. And he started to really lay into this guy and I read some of that guy's comments and I didn't feel like he was being like at first he was just asking a question and then I felt like he challenged Donnie a little by saying like are you sure you didn't see it like working at a comic store and Donnie also in interviews will say he's read he's been reading comics for 30 years he's been reading Venom since he was three so you just assume as a as a fan and when you read those interviews that he knows his stuff and I would say he has to know some a lot of stuff because some of the stuff we're going to mention today he probably did pull from things and it's cool that he did it we like you and I think it's cool that he did it um but we also want to give credit to it so yeah, last words on co- uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider, like uh, in the stacking of powers, because I know you had some stuff to say about that. Yeah, it's uh, it, the sta- I, whether it's a trope or not nowadays to stack powers upon on top of powers, but it, it's been an ongoing theme in uh, in his other as we'll get into a little little later as well. But uh, yeah, like like I said, it's a cool idea. <laughs> and uh, the story, I know that Thanos, I haven't read it personally, the Thanos story, but I heard it was good. And I just wasn't buying it. And now they've priced me out of the market on those books for, for brand new books. But uh, yeah, I mean, just all, all it's I'm saying, just give the guys the props uh, that, that, that are originally created this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So Jim Valentino was the guy who originally did Guardians of the Galaxy 13 and 14, and he came out and made a statement around that time, an article you found on Bleeding Cool, actually. And uh, and that article said, it was a response from Jim Valentino saying, hey, look, it was funny because we felt like it was kind of a backhanded comment because uh, he Jim Valentino comes out and says, hey, look, if Donny Cates said he never read my book, I believe the guy. And he goes, but at the same time, you know, giving someone a ghostwriter power or something is not a highly original idea either. <laughs> so, so you and I were kind of like, wow, that, that seemed like it was kind of backhanded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it did seem like I, 
and, and for, for all we know, you know, who knows? We, we weren't there. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I'm not calling the guy a liar either, you know? <laughs> sure. No, no, no. And like you said, I still, I like Thanos wins. I thought it was a great story. Cosmic Ghost Rider existing in the Marvel, regular Marvel Universe, I'm not a big fan of. But uh, but uh, to give Donny Cates some credit, there was a, a recent Cosmic Ghost Rider miniseries that came out, and he wrote an eight-page backup story in it where Cosmic Ghost Rider meets Frank Castle, um, and they meet in the graveyard of where his wife was buried. Frank's wife and child were buried. And uh, actually, it was really good. I got to give Donny Cates and the, and the artist that, that eight pages credit because there was a darn good eight pages, I got to say. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure whether or not he wrote it, but the one where he, uh, the Cosmic Ghost Rider destroys the, the universe is actually, it, it's, it's pretty entertaining. It is, it's, it's, it's totally out of continuity. And the, the writer, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I think it was Donny. Uh, I don't know because Donny did the, uh, the Thanos Baby Must Die story. But I don't know if he did um, if he did the destroys the universe stuff. I don't. I, don't, I think he did a backup page in it, the backup okay. pages. But I don't know if he did. I, I could be wrong though. But yeah, check it out because it's really neat. He goes back and he hops in and it shows how Cosmic Ghost Rider being there and screwing things up uh, <laughs> is is how and they they make it in a, a neat way how it would have tied into the continuity where it would make sense. Kind of a lot like uh, <laughs> Deadpool Secret Wars, but how. You know, and, and I gotta thank Donnie for this. He officially wrote that Deadpool Secret Wars out of continuity. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I gotta give him credit there. Yeah, he yes, he thank made that. Thank you a, so much. Yes, th- thank you for not making Deadpool the first host of the Venom symbiote. That's right. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, any any last words on Cosmic, or you want to move on? No, man. That that's about it with him. He's pretty uh pretty uh, straightforward. Yeah, um, but yeah, again, I like Thanos wins, and uh, and this is us, you know, so someone else pointed out the cover similarity, but that's all it is. It's just, it's, uh, uh, actually, Bleeding Cool has a great thing they do called the swipe file, and that's kind of what we're doing here. It's like a list of swipe file stuff. It's not accusing anyone of anything. It's just saying, like, hey, cool, check this out. This There was something similar like that before, and us being able to shine a spotlight, like, uh, like you said, a shine a spotlight on things from the past, which, uh, you know, a lot of people might not know about. So what's the next thing that you want to talk about yeah, so the next one is the Dark Surfer. <laughs> oh, yeah. And for I, for the life of me, had no idea about this. Um, I uh, I hunt for, for books and key issues and that, and I was at a comic shop thumbing through books, and I pull this thing out, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and I'm looking at it, and I go on online, and I'm looking, and sure as heck, and the uh, Silver Surfer Volume Two, One Seventeen. There's a dark Silver Surfer on the cover. <laughs> um, yeah, the, you and you told me about this. I actually didn't know about it. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, he appeared there, and uh, I believe he, he, after I told you, you even found him in another one of your issues, your back issues. That's right. Um, and and so yeah, let, and let's, let me reiterate by saying like the reason we have this list is because after the Cosmic Ghost Rider thing. That's when Eddie Mullet and I started talking more and more, and that's when Eddie was like, uh, you know what, there's, do you notice this? And I'm like, yes, and that kind of led us on this path of just taking notes of things that, you know, like, hey, these are similar, maybe one day we'll make a video. So we always thought we would make this, but we just didn't know when, and now we just, well, we have a good solid, like, eight or nine things to talk about, so we're like, oh, cool. So when you brought up Dark Surfer, I was like, you know, I maybe I have seen this before, but it wasn't in the issues you said, which was Silver Surfer 117 and 118, um, it was in Silver Surfer number 64, which was his first appearance. And basically, Dark Surfer... Uh, well, why don't you go ahead and explain who Dark Surfer is? Yeah, Dark Surfer is been corrupted by no, <laughs> I believe, right? I... I didn't. I didn't read all his. Oh, uh, no, not. I don't. I don't mean. I don't mean in the. And so yeah. Okay. So let me let me back up here. The so Silver Surfer Black is a story where um, it picks up where Guardians of the Galaxy by Donny Cates ends, which is Silver Surfer gets flung back to the dawn of time, back way back when Null was uh, flying around, cutting the heads off Celestials, and before he became, you know, king of the symbiotes. So that's when the story takes place, and in the story, Silver Surfer is slowly transforming black which it looks very much like a symbiote has taken over him but really what i think it is is it's, it's his light or something that's dying out so um so what actually what i meant to ask you was uh what who is the who is the dark surfer from the past 
Oh wait, hang on. <laughs> edit this. I I never read. <laughs> oh, any of it? <laughs> no, I just saw it as aesthetic. I didn't. I, I thought you had read them. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, I did read them because you brought them to my attention. But I, I forgot that you didn't. That's okay. Um, yeah. So Dark Surfer basically he's a he's he's the inverse of. Uh, you know, of Silver Surfer. That's basically what he is. He's like, oh. yeah, that's what you, you told me. And that's why I didn't even really dig into it more than it was just like an aesthetic. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. There, there's not a big plot there. There's not a big story. And, uh, and yeah, in the, in the, in the book, uh, there's even a scene and I'll show the image here on screen when you guys are watching, uh, it's the Silver Surfer and the Dark Surfer merging. And it looks like two sil a silver and black symbiote merging into each other. It's actually pretty interesting. Um, so, but yeah, so yeah, as an aesthetic, you know, of, of Silver Surfer turning black and, and doing that. I mean, that even a little bit kind of comes from the Silver Surfer in the Rise of the Silver Surfer movie where his light starts dying and he looks like regular gray as opposed to shiny silver. Um, so, I don't know. Have you seen Rise of the Silver Surfer? Yeah, no, I, I, I kind of forgot about that. But, yeah, but that, I, I know these, uh, these Silver Surfer books came well before it. I, I wonder if uh, they even reference we're referencing that in the movie um, uh, from the from the comics I I hadn't even thought about that yeah um, I guess I tried to forget those movies <laughs> fair enough I can't because I'm a big Fantastic Four fan and that's what's really great about something coming up that we're going to talk about but I'll let you get there but it was something as a hardcore Fantastic Four fan I didn't even know was around and Eddie actually is the one who illuminated it for me so but yeah, Dark Surfer, yeah, he's, you know, it's not the exact same. So let's, you know, let's be fair there. Like Donnie's version of Dark Surfer is not the same as um, as the previous Dark Surfer. It's just, like you said, an aesthetic look. A, a Silver Surfer that is not pure silver. He's mostly black, and that's what Dark Surfer was. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if you if you go on and start digging into these comics, you'll you'll see, you'll be surprised when you start digging up. And but it leads us to, I, I hunt for symbiote appearances, I <laughs> much like probably many of the people that watch this but uh and i was digging through fantastic four books and i believe it's fantastic four 363 there, there is what i believe is the second symbiote in uh in the 616 and that's Dreadface. that's right and i mean uh, yeah if you want to jump there we can uh this is uh we're gonna put this in our venom we're gonna talk about the venom island section now and then we'll get into some of the other aesthetics. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were leading me there. No, that that's okay. But no, that, let, if that's where we want to go, that's where we want to go. So I say we keep going. Um, there is some similarities we noticed in Venom Island. Uh, so uh, this is a more recent story, but I still feel like it's okay to talk about here because we still have other symbiote stuff to talk about after this. So the um, one thing um, Eddie noticed was animals, and, and I'll let you talk here in a second about that. The thing I noticed, and I think Eddie off, all obviously noticed too, and many of you guys, which is the T-Rex. You know, so there's a there's a point in the story where Dylan can autopilot the symbiote, and the symbiote says, "Well, I don't have to look human. What would you like me to look like?" And he chooses a T-Rex, which I was reading the story. I feel like it doesn't serve the story at all. The T-Rex doesn't give an advantage of, over fighting Carnage than just being anything else. So it just seemed like a weird thing to turn into. I mean, it makes sense for a child to come up with a dinosaur to an extent. So I get that. Uh, kind of mentality but i feel like this is one of those ideas that oh let's do it because it's cool but obviously it's been done before the the thing we know symbiote t-rex is from is obviously old man logan but you also pointed out that there was animals that had symbiotes on them before which is what happens on venom island and which books before fantastic four which other books were there oh uh, yeah there was the uh, carnage usa there's a whole whole slew of uh, different kind of farm creatures and zoo creatures uh, all throughout that that whole run that's right. Yeah, they're completely covered by symbiotes and in control by Carnage. Um, but then that led you to Fantastic Four. So tell us a little bit about the second, like as you put it, the second symbiote in the 616 universe technically. Um, actually, no, because I, I feel like issue 360 might have come out after Carnage, but I don't know for sure. Um, yeah, we could we could we could we could fact check it, but yeah, it, for yeah you know, yeah I was, yeah let's <laughs> we'll do that for sure. Yeah, but um, but but either way, it's it's another black symbiote, right? And it, it ends up in issue three sixty of Fantastic Four, right? Yeah, he Johnny and Ben find him in an egg on an island, <laughs> <laughs> right? And he gets onto a. I, I think he hops to a couple animals, but uh, on the cover, it's it looks like. And, it, and if you weren't knowing what you're looking for, it just looks like they're fighting a gorilla. But it's a gorilla covered in a symbiote. It's true. It's uh. So the issue actually, I 
think, because I did read it, but I, I'm, I'm a little fuzzy, so it could have been an egg, but I think they found the suit in space. Um, and then their ship crash lands on this island, but it's just Johnny and the thing. And yes, they have to face a monkey or a giant gorilla that gets the symbiote on it, but then the symbiote bonds with uh, the thing, and Johnny has to fight a, a symbiote thing, and then the symbiote then goes to Johnny, and then Thing has to fight a symbiote Johnny. Um, and that's kind of the story. And so, and that's pretty much what it is. It's just two of them stuck on an island fighting a symbiote, which I was like, wow, that's on a base level, that's the exact story of Venom Island, which is Eddie Brock going to an island and fighting the Carnage symbiote and trying to get it away from the Venom symbiote. Uh, so it, it's just funny to me, the parallels there. And I'm sure, again, it's just a coincidence, but I just thought it was a, a really funny one that there was a, that, and so I'm so glad because, like I said, I'm, I collect Fantastic Four. I even had this issue, and I must have never read it in my life because I had no idea. Even though they don't call it a symbiote, they say it's an alien from space, and it does exactly what symbiotes do throughout the book. And it even mentions that it's from a race of, uh, of uh, aliens that usually conquer planets and that it's glad it found Earth because it wants to lead, uh, a, you know, um, I guess like an attack on Earth. Uh, you know, and that's so it just needs to get around Johnny and Ben, but they end up burning it in a fire when they like when they blow up their ship and they kill the symbiote. Yeah, and uh, to correct uh, myself, I, it's Fantastic Four issue three sixty. Oh yeah, and it came it came out January one of ninety two. Okay, so that was that was that before Carnage then. Uh, yeah, because Carnage yeah. was uh, I think ninety three. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, 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 January ninety one. So yeah, for sure. It, yeah, that's I thought he was the second symbiote. It, it just and you know, oddly enough, he must have been in that pile of bodies um, by that pile, that pile of bodies in absolute carnage. <laughs> yeah, but it, but also it shows that um, you know that not only the thing has a codice in him, uh, which he already got again in Carnage USA, but so does Johnny Storm, and he was left out of uh, absolute carnage. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it, yeah. Like, and you know what? I can't fault anyone for not knowing this stuff. I, I mean. Sure. Wait, we stumble onto it too. Yeah. No, I didn't know. I like I said, you know, like you know, I do 500 episodes of Venom vlog, and not once did anyone mention this issue to me, and I never knew about it. So yeah, this this one I can completely agree is uh, is one that slipped through the cracks and is coincidence 100. percent So all right, so let's let's get back into some aesthetic things like Dark Surfer. Uh, let's talk about Scarlet Spider. Yeah, yeah. This is one. This is one you pointed out to me. Yeah, this is when I first noticed that Donnie. A book that Donnie wrote, and again, this now we should also mention, not many of these uh, new ideas might be Donnie's ideas. Uh, they could be the artist, they could be the editor, they could be anyone. You know, like so. Let's point that out here that we're just mentioning things that are in books that Donnie's written, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're Donnie's ideas that he's you know um, referencing or borrowing or whatever. Like it, it's just coincidence, right? Like these are all just coincidence things that we're mentioning. So. Um, so Scarlet Spider, yeah. Um, do you have anything to say about it before I, I dive in? Uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense, but <laughs> <laughs> this thing, uh, yeah, it, it, it's Scarlet Spider <laughs> armed to the teeth and guns, <laughs> like pretty much like Deadpool. <laughs> right, and you pointed out to me that I think your previous um, retailer or someone, you know, comic local comic shop, they they had mentioned that they would. Um, that they thought Peter Davis was writing uh, Ben Riley to be like Deadpool, and I, oh, yeah. I didn't really see that at first. But then when you pointed out, especially with the scene with the guns, I'm like, yeah, I could kind of see that. But yeah, they give Ben Riley guns in Damnation Number Two, which is co-written by Donny Cates and Nick Spencer, and then that does carry into Peter David's Scarlet Spider run. But if you read both books. Uh, Scarlet Spider shows up with a bunch of guns and pouches, like just like out of the 90s, and he doesn't do anything with them. I think he shoots Mephisto one time, but other than that, he's using his webbing and his regular spider powers, so it almost felt like it was a a, a visual thing, Like, and, and that's where I feel like it might have been Donnie's idea, because Donnie does have a lot of those ideas where he goes, oh, let's do it because it's visually cool, and he doesn't really th you know, think about ideas beyond that sometimes. And I feel like this one, it was like, oh, Scarlet Spider with guns, that would be amazing. Well, it turns out that's already happened before. <laughs> in uh, Scarlet Spider number two in the 90s, uh, the, all the Spider-Man books got canceled for like three months, and they turned all the titles into Scarlet Spider books because he had starting to get really popular at that time. So they were doing Scarlet Spider miniseries, and on issue number two cover, drawn by John Romita Jr., 
and you'll see it on screen here. There's Scarlet Spider jumping through the air with these two little machine guns. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. For you, if anyone trying to look it up, it's Cyber War Part Three or Four. These '90s books can be really hard to track down. So I want to make sure you guys have a good reference. Um, yeah, and I think Dead <laughs> Deadpool. I almost called him Deadpool. Scarlet Spider shoots the guns. I think. <laughs> Uh, well, he's shooting it on the cover, and he shoots it once in the book, and then uh, I don't think he does it again the, the rest of the series as well. Yeah, I think in Peter David's, because uh, I don't think he shoots the guns at all in Damnation. He just shows up wearing them, and then he runs around wearing them for like an issue. But Peter David, I think, has him shoot Mephisto once, which you're like, okay, of all the times you're going to use the guns, wh yeah. why Mephisto? That's not going to work. And then I think in a, the, an issue later, he fires a gun one more time, but it's like... I don't know. It, 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 he doesn't hurt anybody. It's like, you know, it's, I don't know. So it, it seemed like, oh, let's do it. And then it, I, it feels a little bit like Peter David going, why? And then everyone's like, who cares? Just do it. And so he's like, all right, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll have the artist draw him with guns, but we're just not going to have him use the guns. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, yeah, that was something I pointed out to you, and I just thought it was funny because I'm a big Scarlet Spider fan, and I've um, wanted to do a Clone Saga show for a while, and 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 you know and we were at one point i was gonna on patreon before i deleted patreon but uh so that cover i kind of remember the basic idea of it and i was like well i don't think it's that similar when i looked up the cover i was like oh wow okay yeah it's it's pretty similar it's like he's got guns um, that, that that'll take some time to do a clone saga series <laughs> oh my god i know but i, I didn't care i want to <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's a guilty pleasure of the 90s kids it is it is but i think i'm gonna do an age of apocalypse series instead uh, yeah. That's a good one. And that's it for part one, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And I have more of this. You know, me and Eddie do come back for a part two. We just recorded this and it ran a lot longer than we thought. We were hoping to get it around 30 to 40 minutes and it ended up being closer to an hour, a little bit past an hour, actually. And so I, you know, talked to Eddie and I said, maybe we should just split this up into two episodes uh, so that we don't, we don't ask you guys to commit to too much, right? Uh, we wanted to keep these things a as compact as possible while still getting our points across and also sharing these great stories that have been done before that we just saw you know saw a lot of parallels in with current stories and again this isn't us accusing anyone i feel like i got to say that to ad nauseum because i feel like we live in that world of drama and everything like that this is just me and eddie you know ever since we noticed that donny cates was you know pulling from things or we thought we was pulling from things turns out they're just coincidences so we were like hey you know what let's make a list let's uh, of all these things that have appeared in books that he's worked on that also have appeared before and yeah maybe donny has never seen any of this stuff before that's entirely possible our job here isn't to really you know decide that you know it's to share the information almost like bleeding cool does with their swipe files we share the information you guys and get your thoughts and see what you think of it uh so please let me know your thoughts down below and like i said make sure you stay subscribed because eddie's mullet and i will come back in the next episode and we'll talk about more similarities not just stuff that uh, donny cates does in his current runs and in some of his recent runs that tie into old marvel books but also some recycled ideas that donny uses uh, that he did in some of his indie books that have popped up in uh, you know some of his Venom stuff. Like, for example, he did a book called A Tomahawk. And in that book, there was an arc called A Tomahawk Rex. And that is about a, you know, a space knight type creature who, like, who's like a robot who is looking for his god. And he has to go free his god. He wants to go find where his god is. He has this magical axe and uh, called the Atomahawk. And he's going around to look for his god. And that just reminded me of Null and then the Grendel trying to free Null from his captivity. So again, some parallels there. You know, maybe Donnie's just like, hey, it was cool in that book. Let's use it in this book. Um, or it could just be coincidental. We don't know. That's not up for us to decide, but we'll share that information with you guys in the next episode and we'll let you decide for yourself. So out of these ones we talked about here today, let us know what you think down below and we'll uh, continue the conversation down there as always. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in part two. Peace.